Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney. Today's video, we are going to be reading BookTuber's best books of 2023. This is my second time doing a video like this, and not only was it probably in my top five favorite videos that I did all year last year, but two of the books that I read for that video ended up on my best books of 2023 list. I am, I, I am literally so excited for this video. Right now we have definitely six books that I'll be reading for this vlog. Avi's joining us, if you didn't hear her click clack. <laughs> Hi. And for this year's video of reading BookTuber's best books of 2023, I watched definitely over 50 videos, probably upwards of 100, and kept track of books that repeated themselves in a spreadsheet, while also staying true to myself and focusing on books that I definitely have been interested, ones that I specifically have owned for a while as well. And it was days, it was days of work and data and tallying, cross-referencing, and I am so excited for the list of books that I ended up choosing for this video. So let me introduce to you the very first book that we will be reading for this video. This book lands in the mystery thriller category. Specifically for this category, I couldn't choose which one I should read, so I ended up doing a poll on Instagram. If you watched my Spin the Bottle TBR video, then you know how that unfolded. The two books that were up against each other were Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll and The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. And the book that won was Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. This book showed up on Cindy's, Meg's, as well as Ashley's best books of 2023. I will have everyone's handles linked down below in the description, by the way, so please check all of these booktubers out. I was really pulling for this one. For whatever reason, this sounded exactly like what I wanted to be reading right now. It's a mystery thriller with some historical events as well. It is basically surrounding the victims or the people closely connected to the victims of a serial killer. And we learn that it's Ted Bundy, but in the book, he is never actually named, which is phenomenal because all Already, I'm a quarter of the way through. <laughs> the author is doing a really good job at highlighting the victim stories and not focusing on idolizing the serial killer, which happens every day in society for whatever reason. And one of our point of views is Pamela, who is the president of a sorority. And the other point of view, I just met her. Her name is Ruth and I don't know much about her side yet, but I will update you as this vlog continues. Already, I'm sort of obsessed with it. I don't know if it's like a right book, right time sort of thing, but the writing is immediately sucking me in. The way that Jessica Knoll is telling these women's stories is so close and visceral, but also told with, I don't know, such purpose. Because if you're familiar with these cases, then the way it's written, like it's very obvious about what's gonna happen sometimes, but it's not in the in a way that like takes away from the story. Like the way that she tells us like the foreshadowing of what's gonna happen, it's like she swung the lock lever and pushed her palms against the glass, leaving behind prints that would soon have no living match. That's on page five. Like I immediately, when I read even just that singular line, I was like, okay, all right, I'm into this. I'm really excited. Obviously it is going to be kind of a difficult read, I'm guessing, just because of the subject matter. But right now the writing, I all I can think about is reading this book more. Like I physically am sitting down ready to film my tier ranking video of every book that I've read in 2023. But know that while I'm doing that, all I'm thinking about is taking this makeup off and getting back to reading this book. <laughs> so already this vlog is off to a really strong start. I'm really stoked about it. And once I get a little bit further, I will come back and update you. Cool, 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 cool. Right here, it's gonna be okay. The world could fall down, it's gonna be okay. The sun could go out, we're gonna be okay. If all the blue skies make to gray, we're gonna be okay. Hello, welcome back. I have finished Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. This may be the book that was least recommended for this vlog, coming in at only three other different booktubers that mentioned this one. And maybe I shouldn't have started with this one since it was like least recommended, but like I think that at my heart I am a mood reader and this one is what sounded best to me at the moment. So I started with this one. I'm so glad I started with this one because it's a really solid book. I'm gonna have to visit this author's backlist because her writing was absolutely beautiful. I loved how she told this really difficult raw story of these victims without idolizing the serial killer himself, but still sort of like putting the fear of it all into the reader. Like literally this morning when Caleb and I were walking Abby, <laughs> someone was on a run. Someone was just running, exercising, but I didn't hear him until he was literally like right behind my shoulder. I literally almost thought I was about to die. I like jumped into Caleb. Like I saw my life flash before my eyes. That man scared me that bad. And I think that this book had a lot to do with 
how I reacted to that because it was, it was just a man running for exercise and this book put me on edge enough to actually think that my life was about to be in jeopardy from a jogger. And it's not like this book is scary, but if you do have like some sort of specific trauma that this book could evoke from you, like definitely look at the trigger warnings. Make sure that you are in a space where mentally, where you are able to handle it because it's dark, but the way that it's written was so phenomenal. Like I honestly am so glad that Ashley, Cindy and Meg all loved it so that I could read it for this video. I'm settling at like a four and a half stars. The book was maddening with how society at this time really just brushed off women, made them feel silly, less than, not important, not smart enough, or not stable enough to actually have thoughts or, you know, come to people with actual problems. Like the amount of times that these women were brushed off or made feel less than, like, oh, it was awful. But like, you know that that's how it was. Like it was so hard to read about because this should not have been as difficult as it was, you know, to get a conviction. And it's just like the things that our main character had to be conscious of while she was taking the stand when she was a legitimate eyewitness for, for what, what, what was going on. Like she could show emotion, but not too much because then she would be seen as hysterical. And just like the last line of the book made me want to cry just a little bit. <laughs> I won't share it just in case you're someone who wants to, you know, experience it for yourself. But yeah, um, really, <laughs> really loved this book. I think it's a solid, like, I don't know if it's five stars. Like, we'll see how it sits with me over the next couple days. I think I would rate it five stars on Goodreads, but four and a half on Storygraph is how I feel. So this first book of the vlog, I think is a massive success and I just can't wait to keep going. So right now I'm doing sprints with my Patreon. Yes, that is the setup. I have a little stool and a stand that I put my laptop on. I'm going to finish this little latte that I made and I think heat up some lunch while maybe starting the next book of this video. And honestly, it's a book that I, for whatever reason, have never been drawn to. I know even more so now how many people love this book. The list is so long. I honestly was really surprised to see this book so many times. Like I knew people liked it, but I didn't know that people liked it this much. <laughs> the book in question is going to be The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Madonna. <laughs> This book particularly shows up in Hannah's, Heather's, Leo's, Haley's, Reagan's, Elisa's, and Michaela. Literally so many people have loved this book. This is like a cozy, witchy, grumpy sunshine romance. And it kind of seems like it's something that might be good for me after just finishing a book about serial killers, you know? <laughs> so we're gonna go this route and try to make myself happy again. So let's get into it. Welcome. I've had a really dumb day. <laughs> First of all, it is raining outside. I hope that the ambiance is really like pleasant instead of annoying. So if, if it's annoying, I'm sorry, but we're in my car because I just spent the last two hours at the dealership for my car. I have like a tire and rim warranty. So if I have issues with my tires or my rims, I can go like get it fixed for free. And I've been having a slow leak on one of my tires and apparently there was a nail in the side. So, you know, I had to get a new tire, but here's what, here's the thing. <laughs> I sat there for two hours and no one came to get me. So then I went back into the, like the, the shop area and I was like hey just checking on my car I don't think it should be wait taking this long the guy looked at my name looked at the computer and said oh yeah you're good to go was no one gonna tell me <laughs> and not only that but I have to come back on Monday because they had to order my tire so I'm not even rid of this place yet so upsetting <laughs> but while I was waiting I did get about halfway my bookmark just fell out phenomenal cool 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 um I got about halfway of the very secret society of irregular witches so yes I did get some pages read but the chairs in this place were so uncomfortable there was zero lumbar support and I started to get like nauseous <laughs> from doing a consistent crunch while I was reading so needless to say not even my dirty chai that I got before I came here was saving the day I'm done complaining now okay we'll talk Talk about this book now. The reason I think that this book has never sounded good to me is because the long title just annoyed me, like for no reason. I also didn't really know what to expect. I knew it was like a cozy, witchy, grumpy sunshine sort of romance and surface level sounded great, but there was just something about the book that I just wasn't really excited to, to pick up. And I'm happy to say that I am enjoying it. I am having a good time. I'm not necessarily getting five star feels yet, but I definitely think that I'm enjoying it way like more than a 
three star. So, so far, vibes are good. We're following uh, our main character, Mika Moon, who is a witch. And in this world, witches can't be like together. They can't live together. They can't interact with each other in fear that the world would be able to sense that they're witches and sense the magic. And then, you know, they would be outed and it would be tragic and potentially, who knows. But Mika has always been sort of like lonely growing up and she yearns for this sense of community. She learns to, you know, talk about this thing that she loves so much, which is magic. And so she creates this like Instagram profile and posts about spells and just kind of like this witch core thing. Like, you know, she thinks that no one will sense that she's actually a witch. And lo and behold, someone does. This someone is Ian, who lives at this house with a couple other people who are sort of like parents, basically, taking care of these three young witches. Mika doesn't know this, but she is being invited to be their magic teacher and try to teach these kids how to control their magic and how to basically like interact with normal society and be able to live a normal life while also being a witch. And so far, I actually like, I'm really liking it. It's really cute. I'm excited to see the progression of the kids and their magic. Like I was worried that the children might be a little bit annoying to me. The only thing that is annoying is the voice for the kids in the audiobook. You can overtly tell that the narrator is just plugging her nose and to make it sound a little bit more nasally and little. And it it's a little bit maddening. <laughs> I very well might stop listening to the audiobook and just read it with my eyes. But that is the only complaint that I have right now. I'm excited to keep going. I'm getting out of this dealership way later than I wanted to. We have to drop off a package because I got a carpet, a rug, area rug for my library and y'all voted on it on Instagram and I got the one that won and I hate it. <laughs> I was really excited about it. I thought that one was going to be the, the right choice, but it didn't look good. It just, it didn't look good. So we're returning it. Um, another one is in the works. I'm going to see if that one works better. If it doesn't, then I'm just going to go thrifting for one and we'll, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But yeah, I wanted to get one of these rugs because I got swatches for the reading chair that I want to get and I wanted to like match it with the carpet, you know. But if this next rug that I got doesn't look good either, then I'm just going to order the chair anyways and we'll make the rug match the chair is what I'm doing. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I needed this to vent. I'm so, thank you for being here. <laughs> I needed to vent for a minute. Um, I'm glad that this is going well. I have to go home and actually finish editing my tier ranking every book I read in 2023 video. So I'm gonna drop off this package. I have to pick up another item actually. A local artist does yearly calendars with her artwork. And since she's local, I'm just gonna pick it up instead of pay for shipping. So I'm gonna pick that up, drop that off and go the frick home. I'm gonna go home. <laughs> so I'll see you soon. <laughs> Like a shift in the flow A change coming It's inevitable In the paradise We can work it out And see the hard times fading And the sun rise This is Sammy. I know he looks a lot like Juno but it's, this is Sammy. He's our porch cat turned indoor cat. Um, I think that you can see that this is like flashing. I feel like I should move. That's not pleasant for anybody. I'll move this way. Yeah, that's fine. This is fine. <laughs> Sammy was our porch cat. Caleb made him a little like kitty condo. It had like a complete heating pad inside as well. It's it's really impressive, like, like made out of cedar. It's really, you know, weather resistant, very good. But it is negative degrees and it is unbearable to think of our sweet little baby boy trying to just fight for his life every day out there in that cold. So we have brought him inside. He's been inside every now and then, but since it hasn't been too bad, he like he likes being outside. He's very much a explorer. So he hasn't like stayed inside for long periods of time, but now he's like as happy as can be. I don't think he's known such happiness as to sit on the couch with me while I read. Like he's so stinking cute and he's just having the best time of his life. Once it's nice out again, he'll probably become like an indoor outdoor cat because we've gotten him all of his shots. He's gotten a bunch of fleas treatments like he's clean we've combed him we haven't found anything so everyone is safe inside my house in fact we're taking him and Avi on Saturday for their next vet appointment to keep getting their their vaccines just their like yearly things and if you're wondering I know people will wonder how they all get along um, so far we're still keeping Juno and Sammy separate like right now Juno is sleeping upstairs she's not locked upstairs but if she came downstairs we would put Sammy in his little confinement down in the basement where we have a little like blankets beds litter box 
box, food, water, everything set up for him down there. That's where he slept last night. It was his first sleepover <laughs> and it went really well. There seems to be no complaints so far. Avi likes Sammy just fine. I mean, Sammy will nudge, give, like, give a little head nuzzle to Avi. Sammy loves everyone. Sammy's the best. We just need Juno to slowly warm up to him because she's the queen, you know? But yeah, so um, hi, welcome. Last time I updated you, I think I was still at the car dealership because I was having tire troubles. Well, they ordered the tire and I was supposed to go back today to get it put on and I called at 10 a.m. because they told me that it would be there at 8 a.m. and they was like, oh yeah, it's not here yet. It should be here by noon. And I was like, okay, do you want me to call then? And you know, then I can see if it, it, it arrived. And they're like, no, we'll call you. And I was like, okay, well, you didn't come call me when my car was done for over an hour and a half. So I don't really trust you guys, but okay. <laughs> um, it is now 1.30 and they haven't called me. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of like give up on that for the day. Um, if they call, then I'll go in tomorrow to get my tire put on. It's not the end of the world. It is what it is. Just a little bit annoying. You know what I'm saying? So apparently we're not leaving the house today, which I'm not mad about because I worked all weekend. Saturday, Sunday, two 12 hour shifts. They were actually really rough. Go ahead, Abby. You can go up. Come on. And it was a really hard weekend. On our unit, we need 18 nurses to be fully staffed and we only had 12. Um, so it was a lot. It was a lot of work. I did actually get to eat, which is good. <laughs> um, but when I wasn't, you know, taking my little time to scarf and disassociate for 10 minutes, we were never sitting down. So I don't mind being a little slug today and just lounging around because I also have a lot to do. So I finished like 15 minutes ago, the very secret society of irregular witches we're gonna chat about this we're gonna talk about the next book that we're gonna be starting and hopefully finishing later tonight maybe hopefully and I'm sure you already saw it sitting on the couch but um, if you didn't see it sitting on the couch then we're just gonna act like you didn't and it'll be a surprise in a couple minutes because I want to tell you about this one I'm happily informing you that I absolutely loved this book <laughs> it's probably going to go down as like my favorite cozy romance because that's what it is this is a warm hug of a book it is quoted by Tasha Suri on the cover a warm witchy hug of a book and it couldn't be any more accurate. We're following this little found family that live in this house underneath wards to protect them from like the outside eyes because there are three young witches living in this house that are really untrained. They don't know how to use their magic. And that's where our main character, Mika Moon, comes in. She's kind of hired to come in and teach these young witches how to control their magic, how to not be scared of their magic, how to learn to love their magic, among many other plot points that keep this story absolutely compulsively readable. Not only was the plot something that I absolutely could not wait to be back in when I I wasn't physically reading this book, but the romance within this was absolutely perfect as well. It wasn't the like main focus of the story, but it was very prominent and it was completely swoon worthy. The conversations in this book specifically about how really both of the main characters never really felt like they belonged. They're very lonely and eventually finding a place that they call home and people that actually love, care, and see them. It like was, it was, it was perfect. It was, it was literally perfect. And I cried multiple times. <laughs> I am so glad that I finally read this book and I'm so upset that it took me so long. Like I truly, I don't, I don't know why I was so annoying about not reading this book. I legitimately don't have a good reason as to why I thought I wouldn't like this because it has everything. Found family, witchy, magic, grumpy sunshine. That was perfect. I loved our little grump of a main character over here and how he's like bookish, like perfect. They are literally <laughs> a dream boat of a team. Like her favorite liquor is gin. Like, hello, same. <laughs> I love it. I'm just so happy that I finally read it. I'm so happy that it went well. I want to give it a five stars. This this is a title that I could see maybe going down to a 4.5, but also like I know it wouldn't be lower than that ever because of the conversations and how great these characters were written. Like I loved it. I did. I would give this a five star right now and it should definitely be on your guys's TBR. It's really, it was really, really great. <laughs> I can't tell if this hat fits me weird. This is Caleb's hat because I couldn't go upstairs to get my hat since Juno's sleeping up there. And I know that if I walk upstairs, Sammy will follow me and we can't have them that close yet. We want their first like face-to-face -face interaction to be like, as positive as possible. So we got to let them like smell each other's scents. You know how it goes if you have ever like introduced new cats together, but you're supposed to like let one cat have free roam and then lock that cat away while the other cat comes down to sniff that cat's scent. And then you keep flip-flopping them so that they get used to each other's scents, you know? And then by the time that they meet each other, it's like, oh, that was your scent. That was, yeah, that was you? Like, you know, kind of like the Spider-Man meme, but only two cats. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know if I look silly, but this is what we're 
we're working with today. And we can move on from this little short ramble uh, into the next book. I'm really excited about it. Another one that I'm surprised I haven't read already, and it is Yellowface by R.F. Kuang. Let's see who talked about this one. This one was one of the most, if not the most, talked about on Booktuber's Best Books of 2023 videos. Yeah, this is the most popular one, kind of like by far. <laughs> Yellow face. This one right here was talked about by Chandler, Gabby, Rachel, Jan, Katie, Jen, Cafe Ulivra, Lucy Wood, Jamie's Library, Kara's Bookshelf, and Jess Owens. And again, I'm sure that this book is on more people's best books of 2023, but again, of the videos that I watched, this one had so much crossover between videos. So this is the next one on the list. I'm actually just going to start reading it. It's a little bit hard right now because if Sammy wakes up and starts walking around, I have to stop what I'm doing and kind of act like I'm baby babysitting a toddler since he can't just be free roaming. Um, so I'm getting a little look into what parenting might be like. <laughs> and I just have to make sure that he doesn't like go upstairs and interact with Juno without me present, that sort of thing. So we're gonna try to get as many pages in as possible right now while our sweet baby boy takes a nap. <laughs> I'm just about halfway through yellow face now. <laughs> It's great. I mean, you shouldn't be surprised. Um, I have loved everything I've ever read by R.F. Kuang. Um, and I will tell you that I knew by page nine I was going to love this book. <laughs> I literally laughed out loud while reading this page in particular. It's just so insightful in such a like on the nose sort of way of this really unlikable character named June Hayward. And she is friends, sort of acquaintances with this best-selling author, Athena. And June's debut novel completely flopped, did not do well. She's been struggling with her writing career while Athena her first book was was great she's been getting deals and deals and everything she does ha has been going really well for her and one night they were getting drinks together because they just keep like showing up in the same places they just became uh, friendly you know and they were celebrating Athena's meeting with Netflix to like sign her for some screen adaptation and Athena invites June back to her apartment to continue the night continue having some drinks they make some pancakes and buy some freak out accident <laughs> per the synopsis. Athena ends up dying right in front of June's eyes. And obviously it's tragic. It's absolutely traumatizing. But also June's a really like horrible person <laughs> because literally like five pages earlier, she was like, man, it'd be cool if Athena died <laughs> so that I could maybe do better than her and things like that. You know, like she is voicing all of these like intrusive thoughts that will pop into your head every now and then. It's like she actually like acts on them. She actually thinks actively about these intrusive thoughts and they're her real thoughts. <laughs> and so Athena dies in front of her in her apartment and even in all of the chaos, she steals her un unpublished finished manuscript of what Athena was going to publish next. And she is publishing it as her own work. She is also having her new editing agency, publisher people change her sort of identity. Like her name is June Hayward and she is now going by Juniper Song. Song is apparently her middle name and her author photos, like when she was looking at the photos that she'd got taken, she's like, like maybe I'll do the one of me outside because it looks like I have a little bit of a tan so I could be a little bit culturally ambiguous or like something like that. And it's just, it's astounding. Like there's so many things that go through this woman's head that it's like, it's crazy. She's like, I donate to this Asian American writers collective. And she's like, and I'll keep making those contributions. So as long as my royalties are this good, like she doesn't care about those people. She's only doing it to save face. And it's just incredible. Like things that she changed about the story are all like to make it more accessible and appeal to a wider variety of readers. It's like, no, no. <laughs> Athena was trying to tell the story as it is, even though it could be hard to read. And she was just cutting parts of the story that were like sad and should be told, but eh, it might make people feel icky. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's just not a good look. <laughs> and now we're getting into the parts of the book where I think it's going to become pretty chaotic and unhinged because obviously her being a white author, changing her name, like she thinks that people aren't going to like catch up on that? <laughs> or she thinks that her like bullshit excuse of like, yeah, my first novel flopped, so I wanted to write under a new name. Like that's not a good enough reason. <laughs> 
all the people online are starting to like catch on to her bullshit and call her out for it. And right now she's spiraling. She's freaking out because you know, if something's going wrong, it's like a car crash. You can't keep your eyes away from it and you, you start obsessing over it. And it's just, it's gonna get pretty chaotic. I can just tell. I'm really liking it. <laughs> I really like the way that Rebecca's writing this story in a sense that it's not like really telling us the story. This is more the main character June is like talking to us, telling us what happened. And like, even there's, there's parentheses of her like putting her inner thoughts so that are always intrusive and questionable. <laughs> so yeah, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep reading. I think I actually might be able to finish this tonight. I'll probably not come back and update you until the morning, most likely. But yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm glad it's going well. I didn't really think that it would go poorly, but I'm glad so far I'm really agreeing with the vast majority of people who put this on their best of 2023 list. <laughs> I guess where I am again. <laughs> We're at the dealership. I'm about to go in and attempt to get my new tire put on in a timely fashion. While I wait, I'm gonna be starting the next book of this vlog. So very quick, I wanted to come update you that I finished Yellow Face before I got in the car to drive here. This book was so interesting. The point of view that RF Kuang chose to write this book from was really, really compulsively readable. And oh, it was just a train wreck. She was so unlikable, obviously so problematic. I'm like waiting for a car salesman to like come knock on my window like, hey, can I help you find anything? Thing. Like I'm like a little bit paranoid that someone's gonna come up here and ask if I need help But okay, so this book has so many conversations and I love listening to interviews with Rebecca Because I just love the way she talks and the way that she writes obviously translates the same way She's just so addictive like on page six. I knew I was gonna love this book on page 97 specifically I was like, oh my god, like I cannot put this down another book in this vlog where when I wasn't reading it All I was doing was thinking about it the conversations within the story about publishing the publishing industry, racism within the industry, cultural appropriation. Like it definitely was on the nose sometimes, but honestly, it's that's not a bad thing because if this is happening, which it is in this industry and in our society, I mean, if it's not already like known and talked about, maybe like this is what we need, you know? Maybe this is what people need is for it to be like literally spelled out for them. And I think in Chandler's review of the book, she said something very similar, which I totally agree with. And also since starting this book, I also realized that a couple of my patrons, a couple of my friends, this was also on their best books of the year and it is Darian and Bex and they both have YouTube channels as well so I will also be linking them down below but yeah this was like the most popular one of 2023 I think this book was put out I want to say 2022 was that right oh no it was 2023 okay well that makes sense I loved the parts of the book that were almost giving me like a Mona Awad feeling like it got a little fever dreamy because our main character was literally divulging into like panic attacks and just absolute madness because within the cancel culture and just the, how the internet works she was just becoming obsessed and I think the only thing that I didn't love so much was that I saw a lot of the plot twists coming or at least the main big one at the end it was like I n absolutely knew that that was coming and I wish that I didn't and it's not that like it was a bad thing that I knew but yeah like when it when it happened when we found out what was really going on within the like malicious social media things I was like yeah <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but the last like three pages or so when, oh, I really liked the last three pages because it, oh, I can't talk about it because it's a spoiler, but like the final twist at the end, you know, I liked it. I liked how the story ended a lot. Like I hated it, but I also really loved it. <laughs> I want to give this one like a four or four and a half stars. That's how I feel about it. And I think it's a really strong read. I'm, I'm really happy that I finally read it. And um, before my camera dies, I want to tell you that the book I'm picking up next is going to be Monstrillo by Gerardo Samano Cordova. I'm really excited. This is like, I think the second most popular book of the booktubers best books. Let me see who particularly said this one. Monstrilio was mentioned by Ashley, Kayla, Gabby, Deja, and Steph. This is a powerhouse. These are people that I definitely trust and I'm really excited to get into this story. It is a horror novel. And I think the order that I've chosen to read these books in for this vlog is like really tickling my fancy. It's really doing well for me. I'm really excited. This is again, exactly what I wanna read right now. So um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'll come back and update you with some like initial thoughts, but for now I'm gonna try to go get a tire put on my car. <laughs> I don't know how long my battery is going to last, but I'm I'm out of that godforsaken place. 
It took, why am I putting that on? I am not moving right now. It took two and a half hours. <laughs> Like, why? Why is it? Why? The first tire that they tried to put on my rim, like, wouldn't seal or something, so then he's like, well, I can just go, I have to go, I have to go get one so that we can still do it for you today. So it took two and a half hours, and, um, I'm upset about it because my day is gone. Absolutely gone. I was gonna film my book haul for this week's video today, but I think I just have to do it tomorrow. Like, I have no energy. <laughs> I did get, like, halfway through the book, though. I am halfway through Monsterlio, which is great. I stopped at a coffee shop, got a pistachio latte, which is one of my favorite favorites ever. So I'm trying to turn the day around. <laughs> but it is, what, 2.30? 2.35, which is still kind of early in, in theory, but you know, I got there at 11. I don't want to be too dramatic, but honestly, it was just, it was annoying. The only good thing is, is that there was a dog that showed up at one point. I don't know what breed it was, but they were so cute. The best ears I've seen in a while. At second to Avi's, of course. Damn it, it's gonna die. Let me switch to my phone. Hi, lovely angle. We're gonna do our best. I didn't bring an extra battery because I didn't think that I would have to be out this long. <laughs> I'm done complaining. Okay, so Menstrulio got to chapter... Oh, there's no chapter numbers. I got to page 153, which is great. I think that's like smack dab in the middle, damn near. I also just flipped to the back of the book and I see this little um, creature that that's Menstrulio when it was a baby and I actually kind of love that drawing a lot. It's so cute. Okay, so Menstrulio, it's about this mother and father. They lose their son and while their son had like just passed away, the mother carves out a piece of his lung to keep in like a little jar and she begins to feed it and it actually starts growing into this like monstrous creature. We're following this mother and father as well as another character who's very close to the family and the mother's family in general. Like they're also characters in the book but we're following them as they're like going through their individual grieving processes and caring for this growing monster and it's been very dramatic. It's been very interesting. So far I'm enjoying the discussions about grief and how everyone grieves in their own way and the like sort of second guessing of yourself when like you feel like you might not grieve the right way. And the story itself is really interesting because the theory surrounding this piece of his body growing is rooted in this like story that's been brought down through generations of this family or just the, their culture. And it's talked about that it's not actually the son, Santiago, but Monstrilio is like recognizing people, calling mom and dad, mommy and poppy, learning things, able to grasp new language, like still has like this like childlike glee about him sometimes. And especially the part, I think it's on page 180, yeah, when Lena, one of the friends of the family, finds like old notebooks of Santiago's, like what was in the notebooks was really interesting. Like I know it was just a couple lines, but like I dog-eared that page because I didn't even have a pen with me at the moment. But I just really, like, I was like, oh, it's like I hope that's foreshadowing in some way. Like I think it's really interesting how it's all being set up. And right now I'm liking it. I don't have any like real qualms about it. It is kind of reminding me, the like the tone of the writing and the voice itself is sort of reminding me of Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez, and I'm all about it. I really love that, so I'm really liking that so far. I'm going to, I mean, probably finish this later today, if especially if I'm not gonna film, which I don't think I will. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. Maybe I'll get home and hyperfixate and decide to do so, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. All I know is that I'm going to drink this pistachio latte, and I don't know what else, so I'll see you soon. To my overhead lighting. <laughs> I was just trying to take a cinematic shot of our wine glasses. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> I can see like the hairs on my cheeks like lighting up. <laughs> I feel like I got whiskers. Look, like you're telling a scary story. Last night. <laughs> Ooh, Abby. No biscuits remained. Oh no. Not a nub in sight. Not a nub in sight. Good girl. Our bags will be 
on our way This morning I finished Monsterlio and we're here to chat about it. This book was so interesting. I know that I mentioned that it was giving me vibes of Our Share of Night, but as the book continued after that last update, I have a revision and it is that this book reminds me of Our Share of Night mixed with The Book Eaters by Sunni Dean. Like, so much. If you like either one of those books, then I would implore you to try this one. Even if you liked just certain things about either of those books, I would implore you to try this, especially if you like the horror genre. I can't really believe that this is the author's debut novel. That's super surprising to me because it is it is written so well. We're following four different point of views in this story and each person is written with such a different voice. My favorite point of view was when we were in Monstrilio's head with the last point of view of to finish off the book. Like that was so powerful and that was such a great choice. Honestly, I don't think that I would change a single thing about this story. The horror elements were done really well. I don't want to like tell you exactly like anything about them just in case you want to know nothing going into the book but Monstrilio is grown from the piece of lung that Santiago's mother took from his body and Monstrilio might grow from that piece of lung but he is not Santiago but still can like access Santiago's memories and those little bits of like breakthroughs or like vignettes sort of where Monstrilio could be like talking to Santiago or just reminiscing on a certain memory that Santiago had like there were so many aspects of this story and plot that it was just it was so beautiful it was it was really good. The arcs for the parents were really interesting how grief was talked about but then you know they have this fear of this thing growing from Santiago's lungs but then it grows into this sort of like hopefulness that maybe it's not going to be Santiago but it can kind of take his place in a way because it still has aspects of Santiago and I don't think that I have any like specifically negative things to say about it. It feels like a five star <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give this book a five star. I'm so excited about it. I'm glad it went well. Kind of felt like it would go well and I'm just happy that it did. Before we get into the next book of this video, a little update on the pet situation. So last night, Juno and Sammy had their first like real face-to-face. -face. Like they've interacted before, but really through the front door. And now that they're in the same house, like I don't know if Juno just has like zero instinct skills or not, but like they've been in the same room and Sammy has seen Juno, but Juno has never seen Sammy for the past three days. <laughs> but last night that changed and they were face-to-face. -face. Juno did hiss a couple times, but not like aggressively. It was more like a little scared thing because she's just a little bit unsure, which is fine. But this morning they had their second face-to-face -face and it's just kind of the same thing. Like there's no real outward aggression. I think it's more like unsure and fear. So again, taking it slow, they're doing good, which is really exciting because Sammy's a little angel. He's really being patient with Juno, which is cute because he's not approaching her. Whenever they make eye contact, Sammy literally just sits down and lets Juno look at him. <laughs> like we were standing watching them for probably 15 or 20 minutes last night before we got ready for bed. And they're just really cute. I'm really glad it's going pretty well. But yeah, I'm just kind of tidying up. I have reading sprints with my patrons at 3 p.m. and I want to start another book before sprints start so that I can just continue reading whatever book I choose for this video. I think the book that I'm going to pick up next is going to be The Will of the Many by James Islington. I've been seeing this everywhere. A lot of my patrons have told me that I would really like it. When I was choosing a book for the fantasy portion of this video, I gave my patrons over in the greenhouse a poll to choose the book for me. This one by an absolute landslide. So obviously this is the one that I'm going to be reading. This book showed up on Reagan, Patrick, Isa, and Cassidy. This will be my first book by this author and I'm really excited to try out his writing. It is a chunker. Ooh, there's an index with names at the end. That's exciting. This one is 620 pages long. So definitely will take a little bit of time to get through this one. Hopefully I can make a big dent in this today or tomorrow. Um, this is the first in a series. So Ivy has decided to eat in case you hear chomping. <laughs> Ooh, there's a lot of exciting things at the beginning of this book. So there is of course a couple maps in the hardcover like end pages and then there is some sort of ranking that happens. I'm guessing it's within this academy that the, this will take place in. The title pages are very pretty. The synopsis of the story is one that sounds like I would really, really like it. It's a main character who's going to this academy to sort of spy for this group of people. He's there under a false identity and apparently he's trying to like uncover the, some sort of murder that happened. I'm guessing within the government or within someone in his family, like I don't know, we'll, we'll figure that out later. But he's having to, you know, live under this false identity and make the people 
people within this academy believe that he is who he says he is, having to trick them and become friends with them and make them believe that he will, once he graduates this academy, give his will to the government, which is what happens when you graduate. You're, you give them your will and it is leached to the upper echelons of society, of the government. And it's a really delicate balance because he has to make these people believe who he is. If, and if they find out who he really is, then they'll kill him. And likewise, if they find out that the people who have use for him currently, they will no longer have use for him and won't care if he gets killed. So it's really like all on his shoulders. So we're gonna figure out really like what exactly is going on. I'm excited to be in this sort of like fantasy academy. I like the idea of the will being what is harvested at the end of your like education, so to say. I think it sounds really cool. Um, I am excited to get into it. So I'm going to actually see if I can get this on audio just so that I can listen to it while I clean a little bit because then I kind of want to like spruce up and then film my book haul, which is now I'm thinking like, what if I don't want to film today? <laughs> I could film tomorrow. I was supposed to film yesterday. <laughs> I either have to film today or tomorrow. Either one will be fine. We'll see what I end up doing. It really all depends on whether I feel like putting makeup on my face or not. Right now I don't. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on this espresso machine, let that heat up, clean a little bit down here and assess where I'm at emotionally. <laughs> So okay, let's go make the link for these sprints that I'm going to post to my Patreon and then clean a little bit. I'm so excited for this book. a good chunk of the way into The Will of the Many, which I found out his name is James Islington. That's how it's supposed to be pronounced. So I'm on chapter 29, I think. I think that's how I tell Roman numerals, uh, page 259. I think I've read close to 200 pages today, give or take, but I wanted to come give you some initial thoughts before I go any further in this. So typically when I'm reading a book for a reading vlog, I will like keep a little notes tab open in my phone to keep track of thoughts as I go. And there was a part where I got to only page 70. And up to that point, I felt and still do that the story's really well constructed. A lot has already happened and not in a scattered way. Like it's all very cohesive. It makes sense. The way that everything is structured is really inviting and just makes me want to keep reading. I do really like our main character, Vis. He has this like temper about him and I really love him for it, but he also is so good in his heart and just wants to like protect people. And it's gotten him into some trouble. And I think it's really admirable. I'm excited to keep following him and get to know him a little bit more. He's obviously like a traumatized person who's grown up and gone through a lot of shit, went through the orphanage, and is now going on to be in this like a prestigious academy where he is now tasked with uncovering this murder of someone close to who he's involved with. And I'm being vague just in case you want to know like nothing going into the story. I like the discussions on like government tiers and like how people who are meant to be at the bottom of the pyramid like are actually just kept there because that's where they are meant to be and how that makes it difficult for people to excel or move forward within society because of those prejudices and just the words of the people in charge. I do think that just my m emotions towards my day currently are affecting my reading because I wanted to say that I think that once we got to the academy, things have kind of like slowed down a little bit, that the pacing kind of took a dip. And maybe that is true and that is a valid thought. I don't know if you agree with me, I'd like to know. But I also am taking a break, one, because I have to film hence why I look like this, which isn't how I just lounge on my normal day to day. <laughs> but I also feel like I should take a break since I just read like 200 pages today and just like come back with, with a set of fresh eyes after I'm done filming. Because like if I actually think about all that has happened since he got to the Academy, I do feel like it's like still moved forward at a, at a good pace. Like I don't think that there's been any like legitimate lull in the storytelling. I think I'm just a little bit tired of the day. <laughs> But 
all in all, I am really enjoying it. I am sad that it is the first in the series and we won't get to have the second book until I'm guessing a while from now, who knows? But it is a world that I'm excited to get back to. So that being said, I'm gonna go film a book haul as well as a exclusive video for my Patreon. I'm gonna do tier ranking all of the book club picks of last year, the main picks and the buddy read picks, and I'm excited to do it. So I might make a little tea or something like that and then just get to filming so that I can then take off this makeup and then sit back down and read. <laughs> close to finishing The Will of the Many. I have less than 150 pages left. I will be finishing it today and I just kind of wanted to pop in because it's been a few days since I checked in with this vlog, but rest assured I have been reading. This story has continued to pique my interest every time I'm not reading it. I am thinking about it and wondering when I'll be able to sit down and pick it back up. I'm loving the world that James Isling- James? I'm loving the world that James Islington has created. The magic system within is one like I haven't really read before. The world, politics, and magic system are all simple enough to understand, but there are little intricacies that make it kind of stand apart from other things that I have read. Plus, I'm just really loving following our main character. He's been presented with so many issues and the three sort of like struggles that he's facing, one within himself and then two being split between two different sort of like factions that he's having to keep up appearances for. And and solve problems for and you know all of these things like the stakes are very high in this book and it is very exciting the writing is really interesting as well especially at the ends of chapters like sometimes it, it'll wrap up so quickly like we'll feel like we had just had a climax in some sort of situation or some big reveal had happened and then there's literally like two more sentences and then it's like a chapter break and sometimes I can't tell if I like wish that there was more explanation following certain reveals or big moments but I also kind of feel like maybe that's just me being the sort of like give me every ounce of information you can because when I'm loving a book I just want to stay in the world and I don't mind extra scenes even if some people think that things could be cut so I don't know if me wanting more at the end of some chapters would even benefit the story but another part of me actually really likes the abrupt endings like I don't really know because typically I don't think that I like abrupt endings or abrupt switches without any sort of finale or explanation, historically at least, but I don't mind it in this book. And I think that that's really interesting. I can tell that I'm gonna be sad that I have to wait for the next book because this is going really well. I'm really loving it. So as long as these last like 145 pages are pretty solid, then this this will probably be a five-star read, honestly. I hope I didn't just jinx it, but I don't think that I did. So that being said, I just got groceries, put them away. We're gonna take Avi on a walk and then I'm just gonna sit and finish this book, I think. So I'm sure we'll be chatting soon. <laughs> I did indeed finish The Will of the Many last night around like midnight because Caleb and I found this new Switch game called Suica Game and it is just the coziest, best thing in the world and we just, you know, we've been really obsessed with it, especially the last two nights. So, so I didn't get to read until after we already got ready for bed and then, you know, I had planned to read up until like maybe 25 pages left because the way that I am is if I finish a book before I sleep, like I'll just historically just like not sleep well. One, I'll have trouble falling asleep because then all I can think about is the book and like I just can't turn my mind off from thinking about that world that I am no longer in. So I typically like to leave like 25 pages-ish before I'm done to finish like early in the next morning, but I just, I couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't stop reading this book. This is an easy five out of five. There are things that are really interesting about it, like I mentioned with the writing style before, and I have something that I wrote down in my notes app. I'm just, I'm going to read 
read what I wrote at uh, 11 p.m. last night and see if it makes sense. It says, the writing, especially in the action scenes, are exciting and descriptive, but they're also very thoughtful. Like we're in his head hearing his thoughts while also watching the scene unfold simultaneously. And I don't know if that sounds special or not to you, but I don't think that I've ever noticed another book do that specifically, or at least not as well as this one. And again, it might sound stupid. It's like, Sydney, like this is literally how storytelling works. But the thing is, it's like in a lot of other books, I feel like we're either listening to the inner monologue in our character's head, or we are watching some sort of battle or event unfold. James Islington like brought those two together. And while the action was unfolding, we would also get little snippets of what our main character is thinking and feeling and reasoning through and trying to problem solve at the same time. Like, I don't, again, I don't know if that's stupid or not, but I actually really, really noticed it in this book. And I just thought it was done really well. But the ending of this book, like, I feel like I need to do like silent book review vibes like the mind fuckery, the tomfoolery that James Islington did while wrapping this book up. Damn, I mean, it was pretty next level, honestly. I could see how it gets pretty confusing and can get confusing in the next books to come. Like I did look on Reddit forums last night after one of the reasons I couldn't fall asleep because I just wanted to make sure that I was like understanding correctly and see if I was like on the same page with everyone. And for the most part I was, but there were also like more theories that people out in the world had that I hadn't even thought of. And so going through like the Reddit forums was also really fun after I finished the book last night. But this book, seriously, like if he continues to write the series in this way and pulls off everything that he brought to the table by the end of the story, like it could be join the list of my favorites, honestly. Like I love this book. It was so good. Wow. Wow. What a time to be alive. Like honestly, like I know that this vlog always has potential to be like a really good one because I'm reading people's most favorite books, you know, but like we have not missed. <laughs> and speaking of, we're going to go into the next book of this vlog. This might be the last one, but that will be determined on how far I get in this book today because this would be book six, but I think I could fit in a seventh one again, depending on how far I get today. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But this next possibly last book of this vlog is going to be Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This is book one in the Crowns of Nyaxia novels, and I'm excited. <laughs> This book particularly showed up in Liv, Rachel, Leonie, and Cassidy's best books of 2023. This is one that's been on my radar, one that I actually am surprised I didn't read last year because there was so much hype surrounding it. I already started it this morning. I'm on chapter seven, that's page 56, and already, Cursor Broadbent's not holding any punches. Like <laughs> We've already had some dramatic things happen. The action started like immediately. This is a romantic book and we're following our main character, Aurea, who is a human girl girl brought into, I believe, the vampire court because she was found in like the ruins of a little town by the vampire king Vincent. And he actually ends up adopting her. So now this like human born girl is the daughter of this vampire king in this world. And there is this legendary tournament called the Kajari held by the goddess of death herself. And if you win this tournament, then you get like one wish or one something granted by the goddess herself. And our main character, Aurea, is entering this competition. And obviously all the other players are vampires. However, she has been trained by the Vampire King herself since she was very small, I think like 12 years old. So she's basically been training for this her whole life on her like free time, free nights. She's like out killing vampires who are like doing bad things like hunting children and things like that for food. So she is sort of like a vigilante in a way as well. So far, that's what I'm gathering. I mean, I'm only on page 56 or so, but that was the little bit of background that we got so far. We are getting little flashbacks of her growing up with Vincent but like the tournament's already started. Shit has already happened. <laughs> and it's already been a little bit funny. Like I've chuckled a couple times and I love that. So the plan today is to get as far as possible into this. I think in theory, I could finish this book today, but it is almost 500 pages. And again, that is possible, but I also want to be realistic. We'll see, we'll see how far I get. I hope to at least get like 75% of the way, if not finish the book. So we'll do our best. Um, you're sitting on top of my espresso machine right now because I'm about to make an espresso to to fuel this day long reading sprint that I'm going to do. So once I have more to say, I will come back and update you. Guys, I've just
just been reading. I've just been sitting here reading and I blinked and I'm over halfway done. How did this happen? <laughs> this book is so addicting. It's so like compulsively readable. There literally is not a single moment that is wasted. Now, I don't know if I'm saying that this book is brilliant and brilliantly constructed and like the writing is phenomenal, but like it kind of is. <laughs> I kind of love this a lot. Now, me being who I am, being someone that loves like, you know, the high fantasy realm and I love super extra information. I love to know every single bit that I can get my grubby little hands on. I do kind of wish that we got a little bit more backstory of like the world and the politics, but also I'm kind of understanding that that's not what this book is for. This is focusing on that competition that I had mentioned. And maybe in the second book, cause this is a duet, Maybe in the second book we would get more information on those things. But right now, everything that we're like, everything is, <laughs> it's so fun and dramatic and high stakes. Like, <laughs> I'm eating this up. Absolutely eating this up. I love our main characters. The romance is like super slow burn, and I'm so here for that as well. I'm interested to see where that portion of this romanticy story goes because right now, it, it, it ain't looking promising, you know? Things are not going well <laughs> for the main characters, to say the least but like it also is at the same time but not without the obstacles that they face like this is really <laughs> really great. I think this was one of the books in this video that I was most worried about. Obviously the Irregular Witches book I was like worried about for no reason and it ended up being great. But this one, I don't know, I was just worried about it for some reason. Even though the booktubers that love this book, I absolutely adore, like I look up to them. So in the back of my mind, I was like, obviously there's a reason that, that they put this on their best books, right? And I'm getting it. I'm understanding a little bit more. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've made this coffee last most of the day. Um, I'm gonna chug the rest right now and then just sit here and keep reading, honestly. I mean, it's 3 p.m. right now and I do actually think I could logistically finish this book today. Like, I definitely could. It's just a matter of if Caleb and I cook dinner quickly and then we don't get sucked into Suica game again. <laughs> but also, look at these little thumb grips that I got for my Switch. Look at how cute they are, okay? I got this one that is Kirby and then the little stars go on the buttons, but I probably won't use those, honestly. I just like like the little thumb grips of the pink and yellow Kirby. And then I like these ones the most. Look at their little clouds. I am obsessed with them. They're so adorable. I'll probably use the clouds first. I'll probably put those on later, but first coffee and continue reading until Caleb gets home. That's so exciting. I can't believe, I can't believe this vlog. I'm floored. <laughs> well, I finished it. I just want to know like why this book had me in such a chokehold. Like how did I just sit here and read this book in one sitting? This is almost 500 pages. Like it's not a short book. It doesn't feel like now I'm tired. Now like my mind feels exhausted, <laughs> but it didn't feel like I just read this much for so long. Um, wow. Some really good plot twists at the end. A couple of them were very expected, but even those didn't take away from my enjoyment of it. Um, <laughs> I will stand by the fact that I think that I would have done a lot better with a little bit more backstory in the politics and you know like what's going on between all of these houses and things like that. I can't help but compare this a little bit to Silver Under Nightfall by Rin Chapeco, mostly because it's just another like vampire book. <laughs> but in that book, you know, there's a lot of history explained, there's a lot of like world building and politics explaining going on. And that's what I wanted in this one. That's what I think that I missed a little bit. But I will say, obviously, it put its claws in me or teeth in me, I guess, and then didn't let me go until I finished the book. I mean, it was just, it was addicting. I had to see where it was going. I loved our main character, how she was never just like a damsel in distress. She fought tooth and nail every step of the way. Um, I think that there are a couple, th <laughs> now that I'm thinking about the characters, like I loved Rain and Mish, but I do think that like the side character building was a little bit rough. I don't know if in like a week from now, I will actually actually remember who everyone is because they were just sort of presented to us as names and maybe just like what faction they're from, but there was no like actual building around them. Like sometimes their purpose in the book just was just to have another like person within the competition, which like makes sense. But also I think that, you know, there should be some more building around them so that we as readers would care a little bit more or like tie things together, make the stakes higher. So I think like fundamentally the book just needed a little 
little bit more building in the world and characters, which is why I want to give it like a four to a four and a half. Like obviously I read it at one sitting, like that in and of itself shows that, you know, I had a good time with it. I could have broken this up from days, but I mean, I was, I was having such a grand old time <laughs> and I definitely will read the second book, which I already have, of course. So yeah, wow. Since I was unsure if I was going to finish this book today or not, and that was going to determine whether I read a, another extra little bonus book for this vlog, I think I'm going to try to. And I have a couple options for what I want this final book to be. So I'm going to take the evening to compile my footage and take stock in my, my choices that I have. And I'll come back and we'll do this all again tomorrow. <laughs> but wow. Yeah, everyone's doing really well. And that makes me nervous to try to pick another one because should we just quit while we're ahead? What if the last one that I pick for this vlog ends up being an absolute loser? That would be so tragic. Are we gonna do it anyways? We'll see. This video has had multiple bouts of like unintentional ambiance, so I hope that you like the sound of a purring Kit Kat because he's not moving and I'm not moving. But hi, let's wrap up this video because today's Friday. Last time that I talked to you was when I read Serpent in the Wings of Night in one sitting on Wednesday. Yesterday, I actually spent the whole entire day editing this video and found out that this is a, an hour long vlog, <laughs> which is great. I mean, I wasn't really expecting it to be this long, but that being said, I think we're gonna, we're gonna, cap the book choices at six. I always do prefer to have like a set sort of expectation for videos. I don't really like this feeling of not really having a set plan and leaving things up to chance. But this video project in particular, like look at how many more like I have so many other books that I could read, and obviously there's even more than what I took notes on. So I knew going into this video that I wanted to read at least five, and if I read more than that, then cool, and I read six. I could definitely spend today and read another book in one sitting, but also the superstitious side of me is like, don't do it because every single book in this video has been four stars or more. So I don't want to take that chance that the last book that I pick, I might not love. So we're going to stop here. <laughs> there were three books on the top of this list that I really wanted to to include in this video. Let me know if you guys would be interested in me doing like a secondary reading booktubers best books video where I can include these ones and potentially a couple others. Let me know because I would definitely be down to do that. These three that I was choosing between was The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz, which is a thriller mentioned by Gabby, Kayla, and Meg. The next one was Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Wong. This one was mentioned by Jenny, Kayla, and Jess. And then the last one was actually the one that I started reading last night because it was the one that sounded most like I wanted to read at this moment. Plus it had the most booktubers who mentioned it and two of these four booktubers I have not yet talked about in this video. The book is Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wang and the booktubers mentioned it are Patrick, Murphy, Issa, and Emily. I did a little like try a chapter last night and I ended up getting to page 23 in this book and immediately knew even on page five that this one sucked me in the most. But on top of this video already being long enough, this book is also 500 pages and I don't think I could read this one in one day especially since I'm posting this video this Sunday. But I still wanted to mention these books, especially because the booktubers who mentioned them are more that I really look up to and really just love watching and I love their energy. So yeah, wanted to mention them. And again, let me know if you might wanna see an episode two of reading booktubers best books of 2023, because I think it could be fun. But let's recap how the books went for this video. These are all the books that we read for reading booktubers best books of 2023. It's such a great little stack. I'm going to arrange them from least favorite favorite to favorite. This is, I think, the final rating that I have for all of these books. We have a four, four and a half, four and a half, four and a half, five, five with the best book that I've read within this video, I think would be The Will of the Many by James Islington. And of course, some of these books could fluctuate up and down within this ranking, but this is just like a rough little visual. But yeah, wow, what a time to be alive. I couldn't have asked for a better group of books, a better group of booktubers to recommend these books to me. And I can't wait to continue Blood Over Bright Haven as well, because it definitely sucked me in. And I'm already so intrigued to see where that story goes. So very exciting. Thank you guys so much for being here and hanging out with me for a while. <laughs> I hope you found some new booktubers and books to check out. If you've read these books, let me know how you found them down below. Or if you don't know what else to say, then leave me the star emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye!